I'm going to discuss about continuous distributions. We've had the two discussed about discrete distributions. Now we move on to continuous distributions. Now continuous distributions are those distributions which are fitted to data which are continuous. With data that will take any conceivable value and not a round number like a count uh, or so on and so forth. So today we will discuss the important continuous uh, variables are of course the normal distribution. We have come to that. Now we have to discuss about the normal distribution. We have the normal distribution function. The normal distribution 1 by 2 pi sigma e raised to the power of e raised to the power of x minus mu the whole square divided by sigma e. Okay, So this is called the density function. So if you substitute values of x with known values of sigma and mu, you will get the density function. You will get the probability uh, density function. You will get the probability density function. Now I will just show you that in Excel. Now supposing you have a data, you have data with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation. Standard deviation of, let us say, 2. Now, we can simulate a normal distribution. We can simulate a normal distribution in this fashion. So, to simulate a normal distribution, first you must create a column of probabilities. So, let us create 100 probabilities. So, I will create a column which counts that number. I will go to fill. I will say series. I will column and I will increment it from 1 to 100 and say okay. So I've got 100 values. And then I'll create a random variable with the command equal to rand open and close a bracket. So I get a random variable. And here what I do is I use a inbuilt function in Excel which is called norms inverse equal to n o r m I N V E R S E and open a bracket. Sorry. Equal to N O R M I N V. And if I open a bracket, then it says, What is the probability? For this probability distribution, with this mean, I'll fix it with F4, comma, and this standard deviation, I'll fix it with F4 and close the bracket and press enter. Now the value corresponding to that will be 9. So in this fashion I get a whole range of values which I will then try to re-estimate. Now I will calculate the mean again. It will be a value very close to that. And I will also calculate the standard deviation. the standard deviation and mean is calculated using the formula equal to mean sorry equal to average so close my bracket and I'll select this range. Now these values will keep changing because I have got a formula over here. You can see so. equal to average close the bracket enter so I've got a mean which is fairly close to the value that I have drawn because these are randomly generated and then I also have a standard deviation. STDV is the command in Excel. So I get the standard deviation. Sorry. Equal to STDEV in Excel and then I get the standard deviation of this range. Close the bracket and I put enter. I've got the mean and standard deviation fairly close to the mean and standard deviation. Not exactly though because these random numbers have got a formula and these formulas keep changing. So before I remove the formulas, I will just find out what is the maximum value, the minimum value, the range, and then I'll create what is called as class interval. Okay. So the maximum value will be equal to max. Okay, equal to max, I will get the maximum values of this range. Sorry. I'm going to calculate 
the next move this way. So that's the maximum value so far because that will keep changing and then I'll get the minimum value. Okay, I get the minimum value, then I get the range that is maximum minus minimum. Minimum, and then I will cut convert it into 10 class intervals. So I'll just put it there and I'll divide it by 10. So each class interval will range by 1.07. I'll create that here. So I'll start with the minimum, right? Then to the minimum, I will add the class interval. Since I will drag it down, I'll fix it with F4 and I'll drag this down 10 places. Then we get the maximum value which is 8 point, sorry, which is 9.57 and then I'll let it get exclude. So this 10.1, it's up to here. And I'll take out the maximum value also. Minimum plus class interval. So, I so these are my class intervals. So in other words, it varies from 0 0.08 to 0 0.97, 0 0.97 to 2.4, 2 0.04 to 3.1, 3.1 to 4.1, and so on. So I'm going to calculate the frequency. How many observations are there? So I see equal to frequency. Open a bracket. Oh, now it's asking me. It's asking for the data range. This is my data range, which I want to stack it into a distribution. Then it's asking me next, what is your bin range, which is nothing but your class intervals. So I take the class intervals, close the bracket, and then it's Control Shift Enter because it's frequency. Now, because of these random numbers, you don't get exactly, the, you don't get a normal distribution. So I'll just do a little bit of manipulation, you know, because of the random number values, I'll just say function f9. Now that's a fairly random number. So what I'll now do is, I will remove the formulas. Control C, then I go to Pay Special, and I'll select Values, and I will say OK. So now I think I've got a fairly normal distribution. If I look at it this way, I will get an insert, and I will get a, a line, a line, which I will then pull out. I think I should hopefully get a value which is very close to a normal distribution. Not exactly, it's not smoothened out, so you should have smoothened it out. You don't get exactly fairly okay. This is a fairly a normal distribution. Hopefully. Oops, what I did. Okay, so what I'll do is I will try to get a normal distribution before I remove the formula. So I'll do an insert and I will go to this graph and I'll select the line. And then go on pressing function F9 till I get a value which is close to normal. Then it will be easier for me to work with it. Because of the random numbers, it's really not getting an exactly normal distribution. I have to really skew it. So I'm just trying to get a normal, a nice smooth normal distribution, which I can then demonstrate to you. Normal distribution should be bell shaped. So let me assume that this is a normal distribution. Now I'll remove this formula here so that it doesn't keep shifting. And then I'll go to paste special. And then I will get the values and I will say OK. So now we got a fairly normally distributed value. We are assuming that. We are assuming it's a normal distribution. The mean is uh, 
the mean is 5.02, the actual mean is 5, the standard deviation is 2. So yes, it's got all the properties as well, just about barely, barely normal. And you got the, the mean, uh, which is, of course, we've got the mean over here, which is 5.02, very close to the original mean, and also the standard deviation, but not a very smooth curve. Now, from this normal distribution, okay, this, this is a continuous distribution, I will com convert it into a probability the probability density function by expressing each as a percentage of the sum. As a percentage of the sum. So I press Ctrl F4. And the first value accounts for 4%. The second value accounts for 4%. The third value accounts for 12 17, 22, this has got the largest value. So this is the mode, 5.02. The mean is also thereabouts. And the standard deviation is 2. And this is the distribution. So now we can find out for a value of 1.52, the probability is 0 0.04. This value will occur in 4% of the cases. This value, the next value, will occur in 12% of the cases. This value will occur in, in that range. That range will occur in the values will occur and lie in that range. So this is it. So you can find out if I find this this 0 0.04 is a height at this value 1.52. The height of this distribution is 0 0.05. The height at 5.02 it will be 0 0.22. Okay, it's that's that's a height. So that's called the density the density so we can get these densities directly we can get these de densities directly and, and for a moment i will i will i will take this out okay. okay now supposing i want to find out what is the probability the value extends from minus infinity to 3.4 then i can get it using something i want to know what is this value this value now this is for the range this is for the value from 2.46 odd to 3.4 it occurs to so values in that range now supposing i'm specific about 3.4 i want to know then my command will be equal to n o r m d i s t open a bracket so it's asking you the value right and then it's asking you what is the mean then you say the mean is this. Then it's asking me what is the standard deviation? It is this. And then it's asking me whether it's cumulative. Cumulative is this entire area up to 3.4. If I say it falls, I will get the density. I don't want cumulative. Then I get the density. So the height at 3.4, at exactly 3.4, the height of this distribution is 1.14. Right? So you can just see that. So I'll just fix this with function f4 and fix this also with function f4. Okay, then I can drag it. So I'm talking of specific values. So this value, 3, 4.14. 4.35, somewhere on this graph, 4.35, the height will be 0.18. Height will be 0.18. So, at this value, I can find out the height at exactly, so these are called the densities. These are called the densities. Right? So, the value of the height corresponding to 5.2, corresponding to 5.2 will be 0.19. So these are called the ordinates or the densities. Okay. Now supposing I want to know what is the area from minus infinity up to this 0.4. Up to this 0.4. Some, some 0.4. Then I will use this command equal to again N-O-R-M-D-I-S-T open a bracket so my value that I'm interested in, I want to know exactly, in fact, at the point 0.4. Then I want to find out. It's asking for the mean. Then I say the mean is 
5.2 and then it's asking me for standard deviation I think it's 2 and then if I want specifically that value then I will say false so when I say false I will get the ordinate it is 0.27 okay let me try to get equal to norm dist for the value 4 with mean 5.2 and standard deviation 2.3 and if I want the cumulative I say true and I close the bracket then I will get the area from minus infinity to this point so if I'm talking of a value 4 if I'm talking of the value 4 at this height the height of this is 0.17 the area from the lower end of this range up to 0.4 is 0.38. So it covers 0.3, 30% of the area. So this is very important to risk management and very other things. If you want to know what is the probability that yields will fall below 4, the probability is 0.3, What is the probability that yields will fall below is 0.3, 0.3. Similarly, you can find out greater. You can find out greater. What is the value uh, uh, at 8? So instead of 3, instead of 4, I will make it at 8. Probably it's 0.97. So the area from minus infinity to 0.8 is 0.92. And what is greater than that? 1 minus this. So roughly about 7.2% is the area beyond. So this is how you use a normal distribution. This is how you use all distributions. This is how you use all distributions. So, so this is in other words, what you're getting with this, this term is you're getting a mere substitution of the value 4 into this equation. So if I put 4 here, and here I put the 5, and here I put the 2, and I substitute, I will get that value 0.17. But if I want the cumulative distribution function, that is I integrate this, I integrate it from minus infinity to 4, then I'll get the value 0.3. Then I'll get the value 0.3. So this is true, no, sorry, this is at 4, I should take it at 4, not at 3. So it's got a lot of applications in real life, in real world, particularly when you're calculating probabilities and things like that, a lot of application. But here you're assuming a normal distribution. Yeah, I've created a normal distribution, I've created a normal distribution and using that information from the normal distribution, I'm getting the density, I'm getting the distribution, I'm getting the mean, the mode and the median and so on and so forth. Okay. So, to know whether a for, to know whether a data is normally distributed or not, there are two without plotting it. There are two measures you can use. One is the measure of skewness, and the other one is the measure of kurtosis. Okay, so skewness should be zero, and kurtosis should be three for a distributed. We should be normal. Skewness is defined is calculated as mean minus mode, and we know that in a normal distribution, mean and the mode are the same, and therefore skewness would be zero. So we can do that directly without going into the formula. We can directly do that to in Excel. Go to data, data analysis. Go to descriptive statistics. Right, and you say okay, and then you select this variable, and in by default it will give you. So select that whole range. Minimize and say OK. Anyone OK. So you say you want the summary statistics. OK, you say summary statistics. And it gives you the summary statistics rather easily. And I will just look at the kurtosis. I will just expand it so that you can see it better. So from this data, I can see kurtosis is. 0.16, not exactly you know, normal, but very close to it. And skewness is 0.21. It's not a big value, so it is near normal. We can't say it is normal. We can only say it is near normal. So this is a normal distribution. Now we move on to the normal. And this, this logic is extended to all other distributions. Uh, then you have the log normal distribution. The log normal distribution uh, will have a normal distribution with mean zero and a variance sigma is squared, like in any case where the variable is the anti-log of the data. So a log normal variable is what you do is you take the anti-log of the data. Okay. So 
let w be the normal distributed with mean 0 and standard deviation w squared. Then x would be the log of this, the log of this. Okay, it's a log normal random variable with a probability. So what we do is we convert the variable into log. Okay, we convert the variable into log. That's all. It just follows exactly a non-normal distribution, except that we convert the variable into log. Now I'll just show you what we do. In a log normal distribution, you don't work with let me take all of this. It's no longer required. Okay. Okay, it's no longer required. Now what we do in a, for a log normal, the same data we convert it into log with using the command equal to ln. So this is my variable. In a log normal distribution, my variable, my data variable is converted to log. So this is my variable. Okay. So we go back. This is my variable, and it follows a normal distribution with the, uh, with mean, uh, with mean, um, with sorry, with the variable, so this thing, and uh, this is the stand, uh, the the. the standard deviation w, w squared. So it's very similar to that. And uh, it's just that you transform the variable and use it just as you would do. Log normal distribution will be a little skewed. So if your data does not look like this, does not look like this or like this, then you must see if it looks like this. If it does look like it, it's one, one candidate that you can consider is a log normal distribution. Log normal distribution, you can see that as the variance increases from 0.25 to 2.5, the line becomes much more squeezed to the left. So this is where the variance is 0.25. So as the variance increases, the distribution tends to get more skewed. It's just become very skewed. Okay, it becomes very skewed. So it's critically dependent on dependent on the variance, right? So we can see that. Now this data would also have. I'll just directly do it. So e equal to max and I can also get the min so max minus min gives us the class interval And from that, we do make it into 10 class intervals. We divide it by 10. So we've got the class interval. So we have got a standard deviation already. So we can now create the class interval. So it will be the minimum, sorry, the minimum plus the class interval. Till the maximum which is 2.3, we've got it. We'll take out the maximum, and then we will do a frequency distribution of the data. Select the area JSON and say equal to frequency. Okay, close the bracket, and the data is this, and the class intervals, so which is other known as bin range, bin array, is this. Close the bracket. Control Shift. Right, you've got the distribution. So it is you can see it's highly skewed, it's highly skewed. You know, you can if you get the graph, you will see how this is right skewed. Okay, insert. Okay, can you see that? It's a very skewed distribution. It's skewed. And since the standard deviation is still active. So as I in increase the standard deviation, so the standard deviation is still active. If I increase decrease the standard deviation to one, oh, sorry, it's not, it's not active anymore. Sorry. It's not okay. So it goes to the standard deviation. Yeah, the standard deviation is large. So you get a skewed distribution. And similarly, with the skewed distribution also, you can find out probability. It's the very same way as we did earlier. 
So what you can do is you can find out the probability. You can make it the probability density function by dividing that by the sum of the whole thing. And then you say the higher values are more probable. It happens sometimes your data could follow this by fashion. It's a very remote possibility and higher values are more probable. So you get the probability density function and you can get the cumulative density function by accumulating these probabilities together. So here also you can find out densities for various values. You can find out the densities by using the uh, I don't think log normal is built into Excel, so I will not be able to show you that, but just that that has to be borne in mind. So the log, if the data follows this distribution, then you don't use a normal distribution, but you use a log normal distribution, which is nothing but converting the data into logs and then estimating this distribution function and calculating the probabilities accordingly. The third distribution that we discuss is the gamma distribution. The gamma distribution has, this is a density function, the gamma distribution has a distribution function which is a little more complicated. It has follows summation, sorry, lambda raised to the power of r, x raised to the power of x raised to the power of r minus 1, e raised to the power of minus lambda x, the whole thing by gamma r for this you have to look up the gamma value and all x values should be greater than zero so a gamma distribution cannot be entertained where the values are negative so this has to be very clearly marked. and you get the mean of the gamma distributors r by lambda <coughs> r by lambda so this is the rate r is a rate gamma is a location parameter and the variance of gamma is equal to r by gamma squared Sorry, r my lambda squared. So the gamma distribution is calculated. It can also be done in Excel, which I'll just show you in a moment. But we do not have the distribution. So now we will now use the same random numbers. I'm going to delete these. These. Okay, I'm going to delete these. And I'm going to use the same random numbers to develop gamma parameters. Now gamma parameters, I, I'll have two different parameters, uh, which I'll have to... Uh, generate so that I will call it I will call it point one and seven I'll just hypothetically decide these to see if it works so here same way I do gamma just like I did norm inverse I'll say G A M M A I N V and open up bracket so then it's asking me for the probability and the two parameters of the gamma distribution are alpha and beta. beta. And I Sorry. I had to fix it. So I forgot because these values should not shift. So I fix it with F4. This fact your value is also constant. So I'll fix it with F4. I'll put enter and then I will generate it, okay? And then I will find out the minimum. And the maximum. Maximum. Then you have the range. Then you have the range. 
so minimum maximum so this we are going it is maximum minus the minimum and divide into 10 class interval that gives us our class interval the minimum is 0 0.4 so i'll just do a equal to frequency and it's asking me for the data range so i get the data range here and then as usual it asks for the data range oh, sorry yeah, I made a mistake I should have selected the whole thing equal to frequency in a bracket so from here comma then it asks me for the data range the bin range that also I select I close the bracket Control shift end. That's good. Sorry, I think I made a mistake. So this should be the minimum value. That, that's a mistake. Is it good? So the minimum value plus. Sorry. This should be equal to the minimum value plus the class interval fixed enter and the this this value plus the class interval fixed and copied down to the rest of the cells till we get the sorry. We get the maximum value which is 13.59 and then which I have eliminated. Yeah, so this may not be an ex a, pro a, a very appropriate one, so I will now try to make it the other way around and do 7 and 2. This looks much better. Sorry, the parameters were interchanged. So here I've taken a value like seven point one two one, and uh, the beta alpha and beta. This is alpha and beta. This will be alpha, and this will be the beta. Okay, this I'll make it as one point seven eight nine. Okay, so I've got the distribution. Now let us look what the distribution looks like. So this is a gamma distribution. Insert. Looks like some bit of a problem. I'll do it in a simpler version. This is not equal to insert nine. Nine. So it's a gamma distribution, slightly skewed. Slightly skewed, I could have. Yeah, so in between, it's just a skewed distribution as you can see. But its lowest value is 0. Okay, there's a skewed distribution and uh, it's not giving out data. See. Okay, now we know what a gamma distribution looks like. Now, with, now, now, taking this gamma distribution, we can again calculate the probabilities and we find the probability is here. Okay, the prob this is the probability of this value. Sorry. Yeah, so the probability this is the property density for probability distribution function. It gives you how the, the values are distributed. So, this range of values you have 8%. This range from 6 to 9.1, you got 16% of the observations. From 9.6, from 9.19 from 9 to 11.5, you got 19% of the values. From 11.5 to 13.83, you got 23 of the percent of the values. So this is where you have the mode. You take the mode, right? So now, if I take, if I want to check, now this is a gamma distribution. The graph almost depicted it, but not in a very, uh, very convincing way because there was a small value here. Doesn't matter. But generally, you can see, you know, if it's a decrease, so maybe if I can make this about nine, we've got a better figure. 
So that, that's the thing. So it gives us a distribution. Now if I look at this distribution for its skewness, so for that I go to data, I go to data, I go to data analysis, and then when I go to descriptive statistics and say okay, and I do it for this data, then I say okay, and then I ask for the cumulative. So I will get values which are not at all normal. This is an altogether different distribution. You see, the skewness is 0.8. That time it is close to zero. The kurtosis is 0.3. The point, uh, kurtosis is 4.3. So the distribution is not. Uh, it is not uh, normal. And then this is what the gamma distribution does. So you can find out again the density. I can find out the gamma density. The, I want to find out what is gamma. What is the uh, in the distribution? Not a very neat figure, so maybe put a figure like this. So you see, the gamma distribution is a skewed distribution, not a very neat diagram. The diagram was not very neat or tidy. That's why like, this is what it does. But it's not the right thing to show because it's a, it's a continuous distribution. So insert, and I have to use a line, and the line rough roughly. So it's a skewed distribution. So if we want to find out at the value three, what is the density or the probability okay at the value three now so this 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 is the range so here if i want to find sorry so i want to find out what is the ordinate at night so the value i get 0.16 is between 6.8 and 1.9 but supposing i'm specifically interested in nine what is the height at night at at 9.19 so this is not in the same order 9.2 second one if i want to know what is this height then what I would have to do is, I'll, just like I did, I'll say equal to gamma dist. And then it's asking what is the value I'm specifically interested. <coughs> I'm interested in the value 9.19. Then it's asking me what's the value of alpha because this has to be obtained. So this is my value of alpha. And then what's the value of gamma? Okay. And then it's asking whether you want a cumulative. I do not want a cumulative. I'll say false. And the height. At this point, it's not showing up here. It's the second point. The height at this point is 0 0.08, right? I'll do it again. Equal to gamma dist for the value is 9.19. I'll use the same value, 9.19 for a alpha value of this and a beta value of this and I want a cumulative I'll say true close the bracket then I get a value 0.24 now 0.24 is a cumulative value that is the entire range from the 0 till this point 9.19 is 0.24 so it gives me the cumulative so it gives the cumulative density function and the probability density. this gives me the probability density function this is the cumulative density function which gives you the same value of this so that is as far as the gamma distribution is concerned. Now we will move to the gamma. So this is what the gamma distribution looks like for various values of uh, alpha and beta, for various value values of alpha and beta. If alpha and beta were 1, then the distribution becomes like this, exponentially declining. So if the value of, like in the one I showed you, that alpha is greater than gamma, Alpha is greater than gamma, you get a value like this. And when the values become a little closer, now there's a big range from 8.3 to 1, 2, you get a little skewed. So the, 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 the distribution you fit will depend on the distribution of your data. Now if your data is like this, then you should have a larger value of alpha and beta. So it's becoming very close to normal. It's not the same, but you see it's almost the same. So therefore, 
this course depends the values of alpha and beta depends uh, defined there means decided based on the distribution of the data and you choose the data that you choose the model that fits the parameters that fits the data the best then you have another dis distribution which is called the Weibull distribution the Weibull distribution as a distribution function beta by alpha x divided by delta b raised to the power of nine exponential uh, uh, x divided by delta the whole thing raised to the power of beta and this also applies only to positive values of x is a Weibull variable with a scale parameter alpha greater than zero and a shape parameter beta greater than zero. So both the parameters should be positive. So the Weibull distribution, the Weibull distribution again depends if the values are the same, just like a gamma distribution, you get a negative decline. And then the, if the values of alpha and beta are, uh, um, are very close, then you get a distribution like this. And when they get reversed, when beta becomes greater than alpha, then it becomes like a normal distribution. So these are the properties of the Weibull distribution and we have to use it depending on what our actual data looks like. Okay, Weibull distribution has a distribution function which is goes like this, one minus exponential x which is a variable divided by delta by beta are the cumulative density function. Okay, so, so delta, so we have seen it over here. So delta and beta are the parameters. So, so it is x divided by delta raised to the power of beta gives you the gamma distribution uh, which you can then estimate. So the Weibull distribution looks like this also and if you want to see, I mean I'm not sure whether it's there in Excel. If it is there in Excel, I can show you what the Weibull distribution looks like. So equal to Yes, it is there. It is there. So I will use so I will have to use a Weibull inverse. To get the values, I have to use a Weibull inverse. Search it over here if the distribution function is there. I can look for different. Here I can search for Weibull. it does not generate the distribution so the data uh, is does not uh, support <coughs> so we have a people distribution which is the third distribution and there are a whole other distributions but the property is the same you, you should know how to get the density function and the distribution function the distribution function is cumulative the density function is individualistic so that sums sums up the chapter on Continuous distributions. Now, continuous distributions are very useful in practical life. So, because if most of the variables that we deal with are continuous variables. Now, I can just show you an ex. Go back to this day data on COVID. I will go back to this data on COVID. Okay. I'll go back to get you the data on COVID. Let me get this data.
and given the mean of the deaths equal to mean of the deaths. Sorry. No, it's not mean of the deaths, it is the Oh no, that's not appropriate. I, I stopped the lesson here.